The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is here. I've already compared it to the S22 Ultra, but the question I've been getting asked the most is, how does it compare to the S21 Ultra? And is it worth upgrading from the S21 Ultra to the S23 Ultra? Well guys, we're gonna be finding out in this video by comparing both of these side by side superset style. Initially, let's look at the build and the design. So, personally speaking, I do like the design more of the S21 Ultra. Now, of course, design is subjective, but the S21 Ultra's contour cut camera module has been one of my favorites of recent times. That's not to say that the S23 Ultra has a bad design. We've got the new triple ring design, which I also like, but the S23 Ultra looks a lot like the S22 Ultra. The S21 Ultra was quite unique in my opinion. But that aside, I do think both look pretty good. The S21 Ultra only came in two colors. You had the Phantom Black, which was my personal favorite, as well as this Phantom Silver. Now there were some exclusive colors available directly from Samsung.com, but uh, those have long gone and you can't get those directly from Samsung now anyway. The S23 Ultra actually comes in four different colors. You've got the Phantom Black, a green, a cream, as well as a lavender. However, being the new device, there are also some exclusive colors available directly from samsung.com. You've got a graphite, a sky blue, a lime, as well as a red. Now, if you are thinking of getting the S23 Ultra from samsung.com, then you can get an exclusive $150 of instant Samsung credit using my affiliate link down in the description below. For those of you guys who have been watching my previous videos, you're probably fed up of hearing that, but hey, $150, why not? Now size wise, the S23 Ultra is a little bit bigger overall, and it also weighs a few grams more. There's not much in it, but I would say that the S21 Ultra is more comfortable because of these rounded edges, whereas we've got more squared off edges on the S23 Ultra, which do look good and go in line with other Note devices, but are a little bit pokey. Now, of course, that is because we have an S Pen enclosed, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Both devices have an IP68 water and dust resistant rating, and they both have an armor aluminum frame. Now, the S23 Ultra does have Gorilla Glass Victus 2, whereas we've got Gorilla Glass Victus on the S21 Ultra. Now, Gorilla Glass Victus 2 is supposed to be more durable overall, but in particular improves drop performance on rough surfaces like concrete, you know, I say this all the time, but I am not a drop tester, so I'm not gonna drop these. In my experience, both of them have been pretty durable, but yes, officially the S23 Ultra is a little bit more durable. And also it's been made with 22% recycled glass, and you also have more recycled components on the S23 Ultra compared to the S21 Ultra. Now let's flip these around and talk about the displays. So I just wanna say that both of these have excellent displays. Some of the best displays on smartphones are right now. Samsung makes amazing displays as it is. Now we do have a slight curve on the edge of both devices. And we have, of course, that Infinity O design with the punch out for the front facing camera small bezels all around. And even though the S21 Ultra is two years old, it still holds up today and has lots of similarities with the S23 Ultra. We've got dynamic AMOLED technology with a QHD plus resolution, as well as up to 120 Hertz for a refresh rate, making everything very smooth. Now being the new device, the S23 Ultra does have some improvements. Firstly, it's brighter. So it has a peak brightness of up to 1750 nits. And although both displays can go up to 120 Hertz, the S23 Ultra has LTPO 3.0 technology, which means it can go all the way down to just one hertz, making it more efficient. And the S23 Ultra also has Samsung's advanced vision booster, which is gonna adapt the display to different lighting conditions better. So once again, to emphasize the S21 Ultra, still a really, really nice display, but the S23 Ultra is just a little bit better. Both devices also have an in-display fingerprint scanner. This is the Qualcomm 3D Sonic Sensor Gen 2, which in my experience is one of the best in display fingerprint scanners. Works great on the S21 Ultra and it works great on the S23 Ultra. Right, now let's talk about the cameras and look at some samples, because that's something that I know a lot of you guys are interested in. But before we do, just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying this video so far, and you wanna see more like it, then don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon if you haven't already. Right, so cameras, we do have a similar setup, so we have a front facing camera, we have an ultra wide camera, a primary camera, a three times telephoto camera, as well as a 10 times periscope zoom camera. Initially, let's talk about the front facing camera. So 
The S21 Ultra actually has a high resolution, but it's not always about megapixels, it's about the quality of the sensor as well. And looking at examples side by side, the S21 Ultra still holds up, but the S23 Ultra I noticed in particular was better in low light, and also for portrait mode, it did better with edges. When it comes to the rear facing cameras, the S21 Ultra once again still holds up and has excellent overall cameras. In good lighting, it is very close. However, I would say that the S23 Ultra overall does have better dynamic range. And in low light, the S23 Ultra does get the edge with sharper overall results. And I also notice that it doesn't take as long to take low light images. It doesn't have to leave the shutter open as much as possible, which is probably one of the reasons for those sharper results. In this particular example, the S23 Ultra did blow out the window. The S21 Ultra did maintain that, which was quite interesting. However, in most situations, the S23 Ultra giving you brighter and sharper images. Now, of course, for the primary cameras, we have a higher resolution on the S23 Ultra. This is the new 200 megapixel sensor. And if you do shoot at the full resolution, you'll be able to get a lot of detail more compared to the S21 Ultra. Now, when it comes to zoom, I think the S21 Ultra is pretty close at three times as well as 10 times. However, if you do extend to 30 times and especially 100 times, then you'll notice that the S23 Ultra is quite a bit sharper and captures more detail. You can see this clearly in this example of these people in the distance. And also in this example of this sign, the S23 Ultra does have an improvement for the zoom cameras compared to the S21 Ultra. So that's for the photos. Yes, the S23 Ultra has improvements, but the S21 Ultra is still really good. I say in the way of video, however, the S23 Ultra does have some big improvements. So both do pretty well in good light. However, there is quite a big improvement on the S23 Ultra when it comes to low light video, as you can see from this example here. There's also three main areas of improvement on the S23 Ultra, the first being 8K video. The S21 Ultra has 8K video, but it's at 24 frames a second, and it does crop in quite heavily. The S23 Ultra can do 8K at 30 frames a second, which is consistent with the other cameras, and it also doesn't crop in as much, so it's much more usable. Secondly, the S23 Ultra now has improved portrait video, so you can shoot this at 4K now, and it also has better edges compared to the S21 Ultra. And although the S21 Ultra was wider from the front facing camera, it wasn't as stable. And speaking of stabilization, thirdly, the S23 Ultra has big improvements for stabilization. In particular, when it comes to Super Steady, this is now at Quad HD instead of Full HD, giving you sharper results, and it's also very, very stable. So some really nice improvements for video, in my opinion. Now, there is the new Astro Photo Mode, which I've said before, but I've not had a chance to test because you need clear skies. I'm here in the UK, we don't get clear skies much, and you have to go out in the middle of nowhere, away from city lights with a tripod. I just don't have the time to do that right now. If you're interested in astrophotography, the S23 Ultra does have that, and I'm sure somebody else is gonna test that out in detail. Right, now moving on to performance, and I think this is where we've had quite a big update on the S23 Ultra. So the S21 Ultra, you could either get it with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chip if you were based in the US, but in other regions, you had Samsung's Exynos 2100. Both of these are five nanometer chipsets, and they're okay, I mean, good in terms of performance, but the S23 Ultra does come with the latest and greatest Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which has quite a big leap in terms of performance for CPU and GPU. So although the S21 Ultra still does hold up, the S23 Ultra is not only gonna be faster in your day to day, but in particular for gaming, you can now have ray tracing, and the overall performance is just gonna be smoother on the S23 Ultra. More importantly, I think the great thing is that the S23 Ultra is gonna have the consistent chipset, the 8 Gen 2 you're not gonna have the inconsistency that you've had traditionally on Samsung devices. So I know a lot of people, especially in Europe, will appreciate the fact that you can now get a Qualcomm powered S23 Ultra, and you're not gonna have to worry about potentially having something that's inferior to your friends in the US. Now the S21 Ultra did come with more RAM, so it came with a base of 12 and went up to 16. The S23 Ultra, comes with a base of eight, but most versions will have 12 gigabytes of RAM. Now in my experience, I can open multiple apps on these and they're absolutely fine. Both of these are the 12 gigabyte RAM versions. I've unfortunately not had a chance to test out the 16 gigabyte of RAM version of the S21 Ultra. Now for storage as well, the S23 Ultra has the new UFS 4.0 storage, which has 
around double the read and write speeds and it's also a lot more efficient. That along with the more efficient consistent chipset as well as the improved display means that although both devices have the same size physical battery, you do get better battery life on the S23 Ultra. Now it's really difficult to quantify, but I would say in my experience, the S23 Ultra has around 20 to 25% better battery life compared to the S21 Ultra. Now for charging, things haven't changed too much. You do have the faster 45 watt charging supported on the S23 Ultra, but wireless charging is at the same speed and both devices also have wireless power share, which is reverse wireless charging. Now, neither of these devices come with a charger included out of the box. The S21 Ultra, I believe was the first S device that did not come with this included. And that trend has now carried on. I know in particular regions like Brazil, you may be able to get a charger out of the box because of legal reasons, but in most other places, you are gonna have to get a charger separately if you don't already have one. Right, now for software, the S23 Ultra does come with Android 13 out of the box with One UI 5.1. The S21 Ultra has had the update for Android 13 and has One UI 5.0. Now Samsung has actually been really good with updates recently, and with the S23 Ultra, they have promised four generations of OS updates, as well as five years of security updates. Now with the S21 Ultra, they have been good so far and it will be supported for the next couple of years, but you will have to remember that being the new device, the S23 Ultra will be getting updates for a longer period of time compared to the S21 Ultra. For speakers, so both devices have serious speakers. We've got one in the earpiece and one button firing. I think both of them actually sound really good. I would give the edge to the S23 Ultra. However, I prefer the position of the speaker of the S21 Ultra. And I'll tell you why that is. When you are holding the phone in landscape, whether you're watching a video or a movie, you do cover the speaker of the S23 Ultra. Now, some of you might be saying, why don't you just turn it around? If I turn it around, then I'm gonna be touching the cameras, which I don't wanna do. I know some people use headphones all the time. I personally don't. So for me, I do prefer the speaker positioning of the S21 Ultra better. Right now, let's talk about a notable feature of the S23 Ultra, and that is of course the S Pen, which comes enclosed. The S21 Ultra did have support for the S Pen. However, this was something that you have to purchase separately and there is nowhere to put the S Pen. So you'd have to get a bulky case, which I found quite uncomfortable. I just find myself not using the S Pen at all on the S21 Ultra, although it was supported. With the S23 Ultra, it has really taken over that Note DNA and you do have that S Pen enclosed. And it's also an improved S Pen with latency down to just 2.8 milliseconds. And if you are somebody who appreciates an S Pen, then this is something you're really gonna like on the S23 Ultra. Finally, let's talk about storage and pricing. So the S23 Ultra actually starts at double the storage compared to the S21 Ultra, 256 instead of 128. And it also goes all the way up to a maximum of one terabyte. The S21 Ultra maxes out at 512 gigabytes. Now I still have to say this because a lot of people still ask, no, neither of these can be expanded. You do not have a micro SD card slot on either of these devices, unfortunately. And that brings us on to pricing. So the S21 Ultra started at the same price in the US as the S23 Ultra starts right now. However, it has been out for a couple of years, which means the price has dropped. Now I've had a quick browse online and you can get the S21 Ultra renewed for between $450 to $500 or pounds. Now, in my opinion, that's still a very good price for what is still a very, very nice phone. And if you are somebody who's new to the market and you're on a budget, you only have 500 pounds of dollars, you can't even think about getting the S23 Ultra, then yes, I think the S21 Ultra is still a good option. And it's actually quite a lot better than other devices that are brand new, which you'll be able to get for around 500 pounds of dollars. But if you currently own an S21 Ultra, should you upgrade to the S23 Ultra? Well, firstly, I just wanna say that if you are happy with your S21 Ultra, it's doing you fine and you don't have an issue with it, then I would say maybe hold on to it for another year. But if you're one of those people who wants the new features, especially that new Qualcomm chipset, maybe you're somebody on the Exynos version of the S21 Ultra and you want that Qualcomm goodness, you want the improved display, the cameras, the more efficiency overall with better battery life, then the S23 Ultra might be a really good option for you, especially considering the current offers that Samsung has. 
So they're giving doubled storage for the base model. So you will get 512 gigabytes for $1,200 or 1250 pounds. And if you are in the US, you can use my affiliate link down in the description below, and that will give you $150 of instant credit. And also on top of that, you can trade in your current S21 Ultra and get around 400 pounds or around $380 off. And when you consider all of that, in my opinion, it is actually worth upgrading from the S21 Ultra to the S23 Ultra. Now, once again, I wanna emphasize that if you're happy with the S21 Ultra, then you don't necessarily need to upgrade. But if you are thinking about it, I think now's quite a good time with those pre-order offers. That's what I think anyway. What do you guys think? Do drop me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. I've done lots of coverage with the S23 Ultra. Maybe you wanna see how the S23 Ultra compares to last year's S22 Ultra. Well, you can check out this detailed video here. Or maybe you wanna see how the S23 Ultra stacks up against the competition in the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Well, I've got you covered here as well in this video. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more like it, then do consider subscribing and smashing that like button for me. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV, and I'll see you next time.